It's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall. And I'm returning to weapon tap on your head with another ADH wealth solution. Today, we're going to be looking at an article from a certified financial analyst by the name of Chad James, who did a piece on an article called The Great Taking. We're going to be specifying on chapter three, which is security entitlement. Basically, Americans and foreigners, those stocks and bonds that you find so valuable, you don't own, which is why the wealthy tend to use things like insurance as a form of an asset, not an investment or a stock or a bond. Before I go in, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that like Drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. So as we proceed to give you what you need, this is an article from a LinkedIn certified financial uh, <coughs> analyst. The same guy who brought you the Wall Street bets and all that, or the same uh, credentials who brought you the Wall Street bets. So with the black folks who like to go on my uh, post talking about how Wall Street Trapper is fake and a fake financial advisor and you guys, oh, he made enough money. Made me, made me. Well, remember, this guy's a licensed person, too. There's a reason we have licensure. So the greatest subjugation in world history will have been made possible by the invention of a construct, a subterfuge, a lie, the security entitlement. Begin the great taking chapter three, security entitlement. For an estimated four centuries, tradable financial instruments were legally recognized as personal property. Today, this may no longer be the circumstance. Securities owned by the public in custodial accounts, pension plans, and investment funds now serve as collateral to support the global derivatives complex, futures, options, and swaps. Recent BIS figures <clears throat> estimate the total notional value of over-the-counter derivatives is $610 trillion. In comparison, Statista concludes, uh, excuse me, calculates 2023 global GDP of $106 trillion. <laughs> Beyond derivatives contracts at nearly six times global GDP, that's gross domestic product, collateral itself is a mirage enabled by hypothecation and rehypothecation i.e. the same underlying client collateral asset is reused more than once by a series of secured creditors. Should an adverse global liquidity event transpire, would client assets be handed over to secured creditors in the derivatives market due to legal changes made over recent decades? This is the fundamental question of the great taking. Amendments to the U.S. Uniform Commercial Code, you know, that UCC that your friend who spent 12 years in jail who tells you he knows all about finance and you're listening to him, even though me and I, him spent the same amount of time studying. I studied specifically finance. He studied how to keep uh, from dropping the soap. <clears throat> but the Uniform Commercial Code, yeah, that. It replaced ownership of securities as property with the legal concept of security entitlement. So the account holder may sit in a position of weak legal recourse if the account provider goes bankrupt. Account providers may be lawfully allowed to borrow pooled account holder securities to pledge a collateral for proprietary trading. And this happened decades ago, folks. But your homie's still talking about the UCC. In March of 2006, the New York Fed provided a 21-page response to the European Union's Clearing and Settlement Legal Certainty Group questionnaire. Question from the European Union. 
where secu where securities are uh, excuse me where securities are held in pooled form e.g a collective securities position rather than segregated individual positions per person does the investor have rights attaching particular securities in the pool a new york fed answered no the security entitlement holder has a pro rata share of interests in the financial asset held by its securities intermediary this is true even if investor positions are segregated in the next global financial panic what are the chances that there will be much of anything remaining in these pools of securities after the secured creditors have helped themselves <clears throat> and then there's some uh, you can look at the global derivatives market, the global GDP, and you can also look at the 21 page response, which I'll go through with you guys. But basically, what does this mean? Long story short, <clears throat> this is why I tell you, if you're not an accredited investor and you're a retail investor, you're definitely screwing yourself. If you can't afford to, number one, invest at least $10,000 in one fell swoop at a time, you shouldn't be investing. Number two, to be honest, if you don't have a minimum of $25,000 liquid that you can lose and then tomorrow come up with another $25,000 with no problem, you shouldn't be investing. Thirdly, if you are not an accredited investor, you are not one who is going to be in line to get paid back when these creditors file these bankruptcies or when these security companies file their bankruptcies so what happens is the very similar to like a mortgage if you have first position second position third position so you as the retail investor are very last position they're going to pay off their debts and then the institutional investors and then if retail investors, if there's any money left, retail investors may get their money back. So you as the retail investor listening to Wall Street Trapper are going to be harmed the most. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall, and I've just whapped and tapped on your head with another ADH Wealth Solution. Make sure you hit that like. Drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, wipe ass, work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass, work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass, work in progress every day and see success. And remember folks, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you, but they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Salute.